Hey everyone, James from Merchant Spring here for another episode of Marketplace Masters, where we bring you insights from industry leaders around the world. Aaron, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I really, really know you're a busy guy seeing your schedules on LinkedIn. So I do appreciate your time. So, so why don't you start by telling us a bit about you and, and what you do in the Amazon space? Yeah, um, approximately 10 years ago, I uh, joined a company, built a brand from about a million dollars a year to $15 million in, in just five years. Um, did that majority on um, uh, Shopify and Amazon, but it was also omni-channel with all the big box stores, other e-commerce stores, everything, distributors, the whole bit. But in the end, uh, the last five years of the business, uh, it was Amazon, 90%, 80 90%. The company was sold uh, about three years ago. I had to sign a non-compete in order to get my, my, um, my hit the road pack and package. And um, I got a six months severance package if I signed that. I did, but I couldn't touch the technology I've been working in for about over 10 years. So picked up the next, next best thing, which was Amazon. Um, started my own Amazon store, golf accessories, um, quickly hit six figures, feeling confident. I reached out to a friend. I put their golf, their binocular accessories on Amazon, hit six figures again. Two and a half years, almost three years later, I have a, a basically a boutique consulting agency. Um, I have about 15 to 20 brands that I represent at any, at any given time from head to toe. These are literally products from your head and from from hair pomade to shoe cleaner, head to toe. Um, what's very, very unique about my, what I do and how I do it is I do not outsource. I do everything from A to Z inside that Amazon system from white box photography to white box videos, to all the listings, to all the advertising management. I don't have outside of Merchant Spring. I do not have a other software that I outsource my my work to or um, my system to. So I learned that was pretty unique at uh, Prosper a few weeks ago. Um, it's just, I just call it hard work and experience for myself, but um, that's what I do, man. No, that's fantastic. It's, um, it's, it's certainly um, very interesting about having, keeping it all inside your own business. Um, yeah. So it brings me to my next question. Given that you, you do all of this, you know, you, you are the expert, you, you run the whole show. Time is obviously very important. So where do you get the most return on time when you're working on an Amazon store, for example? Yeah, uh, every, every minute of focus is on what can I do for, to maximize sales, to increase sales. Sales, sales um, generation, uh, whatever I could do for that because sales will cure all and everything. And that could be from... You know, sales and then profits, profits a very important one right after that. So it, they kind of go hand in hand, you know, how can I increase sales through advertising? Cool. Is my advertising profitable? No, stop it. Um, and my sales are going good. Do I have enough inventory? No, stop, slow down sales until I get more inventory. Um, I, get, I have no sales at all. What, what do I need to do? Revamp the listing, uh, SEO, you know, keywords, pictures, competition. What do I need to do it? Um, that is kind of my bread and butter. As long as those green numbers on Merchant Springs ticking, ticking in the, uh, the right way, I know I'm good. I'll move on to a different uh, brand or a different product in the brand's product line and keep on turning those numbers green and rinse and repeat all day long. Interesting. It's, um, but I'm assuming those, uh, those um, examples you provided kind of vary from, from brand to brand that you work with. Like, for example, one might, might focus on PPC more and, or another. You might get more return on your time with the SEO stuff. Would that be correct in saying that? Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, supplements are way more challenging uh, to move than, um, say, a unique, uh, another unique product with less, with less competition on it. Uh, but the, the end end game's all the same, right? So it's, um, you know, sometimes if it's a, a product that's easy to, less low competition, advertising's easy. Just set up a couple auto campaigns, a couple branded campaigns and rock and roll. And then, and then you need to, you know, focus on something else. But if it's, if it's, um, you know, supplements and man, you better make sure that your listings dialed in, your keywords are dialed, everything's dialed in. And then you spend a lot of time on, 
uh, PPC management, just finding the right profitable keywords. Yeah, you could you could grab a word for vitamin D for and pay twenty bucks on it, but it, when your product's selling for sixteen bucks, it's not a very good investment. So, yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, very good contrast. Um, so I just wanted to ask you the inverse of that, right? With obviously mm-hmm. so many things you can do on Amazon, what do you find is the biggest time drain? You know, to put it in a more simple terms. Yeah. Where do you get the least return on yeah. your time spent with Amazon? Yeah, I tell you what, it's, it's what I do, and and you know, starting off with a couple of customers, and then Matt, you know, I'm I'm pretty much maxed out right now, unless unless a customer drops off, I don't usually add another one, um, and I have to keep be good at the at the things that that suck, you know, and so I focus on always improving the process, and one perfect example of that is flat file uploads. I am going to be a master at flat file uploads very soon. You know why? Because I'm kicking it 10,000 times a day on that, on that one subject right now. That is eating my lunch is, you know, when a, a title gets stuck, uh, bullet points aren't updating, another issue. Um, I am pulling out all the stops. I am going to be excellent at flat file uploads. That is, and the only way you could do it is you just got to do it 8,000 times, maybe 10,000 times. Um, and be good at that's one thing, you know, the, the others, the other stuff is I've learned through my time from my, my 10,000 kicks, um, of this, of this game is preventative. I know, I know what's going to, I know what's going to shut down a listing. I know what keywords are going to shut down a listing. I know what pictures are going to shut down a listing is learn what not to do because you, because I screwed it up in the past and make sure that doesn't happen again. And every new list or every new brand I take on or new listing or whatever, um, I, they stay up. That's not going to be my problem, but it's when I take on an account that has problems, past problems. And that's, that's, that's the, um, it's been a lot of time on it and flat. And really when it's that level, flat file uploads is, is, is the biggest one cases and writing cases and all that other stuff. Uh, they're, they're not too bad, you know, three to seven cases sometimes to fix something. Um, but flat file uploads, man, it's, it's eating my lunch, but I'll, I'll, I will get back at it. I, um, I think I'm going to uh, put that as the, the starting title for this video, flat file yeah. uploads. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess moving on to my next question, Aaron, how do you see Amazon selling evolving over the next 12 months? I mean, um, do you, what changes do you foresee? It's just going to get tougher. It's going to get tougher, more complicated. Advertising is a perfect example. There's about 8,000 different ways to advertise now of all the new beta that they keep on rolling out and the and all the other metrics on there. I think people can get buried in data way too much. And if you're, yeah, if you have a product on there and it's, and if you did all the basics, right? All the fundamentals, Amazon, right? Pictures, videos, content, all that other stuff. And it's not selling. You have to go to CPC and you need to get a CPC to kick it off. Well, what metric are you going to use for CPC? And in what column? There's 8,000 columns now and everything else. So the, the competition's t- t- tougher. The, there's more data. Not enough people know what to do with it. And unless, in, unless you've got in here and live it and breathe it and sell yourself and screwed up a bunch of times and learned, it's just going to keep on getting tougher and more complicated. Interesting. So just on the point of um, complication and, and tougher, like um, one of the other interviewees said, you know, their answer was, oh, we're going to see Amazon selling become more professional because it is getting tougher and more complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, do you see that, do you, do you foresee that sellers will be leaning on people like yourself and consultants and agencies a lot more as, as things become tougher and more complicated? I see a bifurcation coming up pretty soon. Um, and the reason... Perfect example was this week. This week, three of my seller accounts, including my own, um, a basically a policy violation was kicked over for pro. It was exactly the same when three times. It was a policy violation for a product that has not been sold in over a year. It was either a keyword or an ingredient violation. And I just turned the product off, turned it off, which you're supposed to when you're not selling it anymore. And Amazon's not supposed to index it anymore. Nope. They indexed all the product that's been on there, um, added three different case files on it, three different counts. Uh, they filed it, flagged it, and moved it 
to uh, from from fair to you know warning label on it. They called my other two accounts saying, "Hey, we're going to shut you down if you don't fix this." They called me, and I know I'm like, "Uh huh." I I have to listen to it. I know exactly what to do, but I have to be respectful and listen to it. And I did it, and that was a sign right there. Amazon's coming down hard. I think they're going to kick off. They're they're trying to kick off all the the basically the the sellers this the side hustle sellers. They want them off of there. They're if they don't know how to play this game, they want them out of there. They want professional sellers that know how to play this game and know what to do. Why? Because it's better for Amazon because you it overall quality of listings and customer service and everything else are better. If you're just a side hustle seller, but your pictures suck, your you know your listings suck. Amazon doesn't want that. So I see them an overall upgrading on trying professional sellers. And yeah, that somebody, they have to go somewhere. If, you know, usually if you're a, a professional seller, and you know what you're doing. Um, you have a, you could probably outsource a few parts of it, but you're pretty savvy. I think it's the brands, the new to Amazon brands that, that know that they, they have what they have a good product that sells. They just, know they need help on Amazon and don't even want to try it because of stupid little violations. They freak out. I, this one brand was calling me like, we're going to get shut down. We're going to get shut down. I'm like, that's the first violation your account has ever had in seven years. I think you're going to survive this one. <laughs> but for them, it was the end of the world because like, cause I got on their account, built it up a lot. They were really happy with it and they were worried about sales. I'm like, this will be okay. Yeah, no, interesting, interesting. I think your your clients are very, very lucky to have you, Aaron. Like, <laughs> you're so on top of all of it, and you know, being focused on driving sales, like you said earlier, is, yeah. Uh, you know, it's I, I think that's that's great because I think a lot of you know, there's a lot a lot of uh, people out there that perhaps have a different view on how to manage Amazon. But yeah, it's a very yeah. your clients are very lucky to have you, man. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> my next question: We, you know, we're coming into September. Right. This mm-hmm. is the entry point to peak season, as you you of all people most definitely know. Um, yeah. You know, it's different to last year. So, you know, the timing of certain events, let's say, uh, are mm-hmm. different because of COVID and all that. So coming into this point in, in the year in peak season, what keeps you up at night? And like, what is what is a very specific tip that you can give to the, to the, to the listeners? You know, um, I, I keep on harping on this one on, on LinkedIn and stuff. Fundamental Amazon business is what people don't do enough of. And I sleep very well at night for all my accounts because I know I'm doing the fundamental business. I can't best pour my can on Amazon. And that's make sure your listing is not search suppressed. Hello? It, that one's easy. Log in and look. Uh, make sure your listing is not search suppressed. Make sure you have all your seven pictures, five bullet points, uh, description. And if you have, you know, branded, if you're A plus content in the store, make sure you have all that stuff. Make sure you answer your questions on time. Um, but what does keep me up at night is inventory. Make sure you have inventory now, but inventory is getting a little tighter with the inventory limits and everything else. Well, what keeps me up at night is not my worry about inventory, but Hey, Client A, B, and C, we're doing great. I need a thousand more or something. We just had our limits. Oh, well, uh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't have it in production for a while. So it's going to be eight to 12 weeks because, um, uh, because you know what? We thought we had enough of Amazon. I'm like, but I've been sending you a report every Monday at 8, 8.30 a.m. on where exactly we we're at. Uh, I, guess we, I guess we haven't been reading that. So, um, but what keeps you up is inventory and it's not usually on my lead time. It's on my customer's lead time. Cause I'm very aggressive on the Amazon side, whatever my max limit is, I am sending something in every day or every other day. I don't care if it's 10 units, five units. I want to keep to the top of that uh, inventory limit. Why? Cause if you're there and you keep selling products, guess what? It keeps on going up and I keep on packing it full. And then every now and then it'll dip down. So I have 5,000 units in there and it said, Oh, you should, all be, you can only, you're only at 3000 now. That's fine. I have 2000, 2000 extra units. Cause there was a moment in time I could send in more. So, um, inventory because that's sales, right? 
Yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt for sure. And um, I just want to ask one final question, Aaron, and dig a bit more into the inventory side of things. Mm -hmm. So down here in Australia, you know, people are saying, I can't get, inventory is taking too long to get here. Or, you know, the cost yeah. of getting it here is now six times what it used to be. Or they're saying, you know, I can't get enough storage capacity in Amazon or whatever. Like, how, how, do, how do you approach that? I mean, you just mentioned that, you know, you see your capacity go down a little bit, you send more, you know, whatever. So yeah. how do you, like, what's the like broader strategy you're doing to kind of gotcha. optimize that part of the business? Yeah, just, I could probably answer that all in all three questions in one. Focus on what sells the best. What do you, what sells the best? I don't care if you have 20 SKUs. I know that three of them sell the best. 80-20, no one, no one outpaces 80-20. Focus on where your revenue is. Focus on where your profits are. Start with that one. Okay. Stuff's taking a long time to get there. Big freaking deal. If your stuff's light, send it by boat, two ways. Send it by air, three ways. Get your stuff there. It's called dollar cost averaging on your price per unit. Yeah, you may eat another 10% on your margin, but you're not going to lose sales by running out. Figure it out. Put it on, put it on, on, on airplanes more often, put it on boats as much as you can stack that, stack that 20 foot container, get it there. Stop complaining that you haven't, you can't get any, because this isn't, this didn't happen yesterday. This has been going on for about 18 months. And if you've been in the game longer than that, this stuff happened. Like when the, uh, the tariff and embargoes and all that other stuff, I wasn't, my previous company was in electronics, like. This, this this happens all the time. It's called poor planning and, and sitting around and complaining too much. Um, there's ways of getting it there. There's ways, there's many, many ports in many, in many countries and continents that, that accept stuff. Send them in on a port, put them on a train. They, find, an L, find, find that freight forwarder or that 3PL that's a little bit more creative than you are. Get it there. Get it there 10 different ways. Yeah, go to the bank, take a line of credit, get more inventory, do it. It'll all end up at the same place. You're going to have some increased fees. Maybe you can increase your, your price a little bit, depending on your competition. Um, focus on your best sellers. And then for Am Amazon restocks the same way, just keep it, keep it filling up, focus on the top three, keep that full, keep that going. Um, if that's full and done, it's a 3PL, put them in a 3PL, set up for a FBM fulfillment by merchant and keep on going. That's, that's all you can do. No, great. It's very practical. Look, I think um, this, uh, you know, as you probably know, Amazon is still relatively new here. So some yeah. are grappling with some of the kind of parameters of dealing with it, but look, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you didn't say put it on a kangaroo because I think uh, one of the previous, <laughs> previous interviewees had to throw a kangaroo option in there. So oh, uh, <laughs> Anyway, yeah. if it works, do it, right? <laughs> there, there is a pouch there, so I guess uh, capacity would be limited, but. Oh, man. Look, thank you very much, Aaron. I think um, you've definitely kind of supercharged this interview for sure and, and shared some great, great insights, especially to those down here in Australia or, or in other newer Amazon markets as well. So um, thanks for your time. And I'm actually really looking forward to having you come back and uh, perhaps after the peak season to kind of do a bit of a review. I'm ready anytime. I do this all day. Nice seeing you off of LinkedIn. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Thank you.